Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we will be discussing the background section of a patent application and some do's and don'ts for an effective background section of your patent application. Just to review, here are the key parts of a patent application. The field, which is a one or two sentence statement on the topic of the invention, a background, a summary, a brief description of the drawings, which is a sentence or so describing each drawing, a detailed description that goes into detail about what the drawings show, the claims, which is the legalese that spells out exactly what your invention is, and the abstract, which is a summary paragraph of your invention. For this episode, we're going to be focusing on the background. But before I get into that, I want to take a really quick detour to talk about what shapes and guides how we write patent applications. And it comes down to three main things. First are the rules. These are things that the U.S. Patent Office sets. They are guidelines about format, filing procedures, length. They're often set in the rules. Outside of the rules, there are laws that cover the patent application process as well. The patent laws are set by the U.S. Congress, and therefore, the Patent Office can't simply change these at will. So they tend to change less frequency since they require Congress to change them. We aren't going to be discussing laws too much in this episode, but I just wanted to mention it to you to be aware of. The next thing is best practices. Now, you can have a patent application that follows all the rules and laws, but that doesn't mean that it's well-written. The best practices provide guidance for how to make a well-written patent application. And what defines best practices? Typically, it's the courts. As patents and patent applications appear in matters before various courts, particularly the Court of Appeals at the Federal Circuit, best practices are formed as a result. When the courts treat a patent or patent application unfavorably because of what it said or didn't say, patent professionals take notes, and the blogs and conferences that follow recite the lesson learned so that for future applications, those mistakes are not made again. Now, the thing about rules, laws, and best practices is that they are fluid. They can change over time. What is best practice today may change in the future. But the best practices that I'm going to discuss now regarding the background section have been around for many years, and I do not expect these to change radically in the near future. So with that understanding, let's get into it. Think of an imaginary line of demarcation between the background and the sections below the background. South of our line is the invention. In these sections, summary, detailed description, claims, abstract. We are talking about and describing everything about our invention, how it works, what it does, and the advantages. Above the line, we have stuff that existed before our invention came along. The background section helps give context to your invention. Most inventions are improvements on an existing state-of-the-art so background can help set the stage, but we should be careful about it. And I'm going to present a few do's and don'ts. The first, do not discuss the invention features in the background. Why? The background means stuff that existed before my invention came along. If I put features of my invention in the background section, the patent examiner could potentially consider those features as prior art, a.k.a. stuff that existed before my invention which could jeopardize my chances of getting full coverage of my invention in an issued patent. So it's important to remember, do not discuss invention details in the background section. Okay, because by definition, the background is for prior art, stuff that existed before your invention came along. Let's take a look at a real-world example. Here is a drawing from a patent application for a lockbox like the type that is often used in real estate. This box may hold a key and be locked and secured to the front door of a property. So various real estate agents can gain access to show the home to a client. One of the unique things about this particular lockbox is that it has an alphabetic settable combination 
so you can make an easy to remember word or string of characters to uh, use as the combination to open the box. So let's take a look at the background for this application. This is only a part of the background section, and the first thing we notice is that it's quite lengthy. A best practice is to keep the background section relatively short. Remember, anything we say in the background could be treated as an admission of prior art by the examiner. So we want to be careful. Sometimes less is more, and this is one of those cases. As a general guideline, I use between 100 to 400 words as the range where most of my backgrounds fall in terms of length. Another thing this patent application did is discuss specific details of prior art patents and applications in the background. Here they are writing about a previously issued patent for a real estate lockbox. And then they also write about this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and you get the idea. They talk a lot about prior art in detail. The best practice is to avoid specific discussions and interpretations about what these references do and don't contain. Most professionals will not write this kind of stuff in the background, though some do. Also, I know that numerous books that teach inventors how to write their own patent applications say to do this type of thing. And there are some valid reasons to go through the exercise of looking through these prior art references. My recommendation to inventors is to review all the prior art you know about, understand it, and understand why your invention is different and better than what has existed out there in the past. Emphasize those differences and advantages in your patent application, but don't discuss the specific prior art in your background. And note that this patent application was written a while ago, and so I am not putting down in any way the inventors or authors of the patent application I'm using here as an example. As I mentioned, best practices change over time, and this patent application is from a while ago. I'm just using it as a teaching example for illustrating the best practices of today. Even though we're not going to describe all the references in our patent application, we do need to include the references in an IDS, Information Disclosure Statement. This will allow the Patent Office to consider and be aware of these references. And since you were aware of these references, you can make sure that your drawings, claims, and description highlight important differences and advantages over these references without going into specific detail about the prior art references. Why are we so afraid of discussing this prior art in detail in our application? Because anything we say can be used against us by the examiner. It offers very little benefit for us to be writing our take, our interpretation on the prior art uh, in our application. We tell the examiner about the existence of these references using the information disclosure statement. And if he or she applies those references against us, we are prepared with ammunition in our application that we put in there to try and show the differences and advantages over the prior art. But the current wisdom is that there is not much upside to doing this kind of description of the prior art applications and patents in the background of our application. So the idea is don't do what you see here on the screen, these different descriptions of previous patents and patent applications, we don't want to be doing that. Here is another issue with this background. While still being in the background section, they begin to write about features of the invention. Here we see the user selectable combination and so forth. It's good to mention these advantages, but they do not belong in the background. They instead belong south of this line in the sections intended for discussing the invention. So best practice, avoid discussing the features of your invention in the background. And even better, avoid discussing details of the problem being solved in the background. In this case, I don't want to say in my background that we need to have a user selectable combination. Let's save that for a different section. Don't put it in the background. In the background, we could state something that lock boxes are commonly used in real estate and there are various techniques for securing the box to the premises and securing the key within the box and that it's desirable to have improvements in lock boxes, but we're going to keep it somewhat vague in general. 
A background that covers these things in this way will let the examiner know that this invention pertains to real estate lockboxes and that should be sufficient for him or her to understand the context of this invention. The rest of the details we'll put below the red line here so they are in the sections where we are supposed to be discussing the invention. So with that, let's recap. First, do study the prior art and write your application in light of that prior art. The more you know about prior art ahead of writing your application, the better your application can be. Don't discuss the prior art in detail in your patent application. Now, I have to point out here, there are always exceptions to best practices. So again, these rules are general and you may have specific situations where it does make some sense to talk about the prior art in more detail in your patent application. But absent a specific reason to discuss a, a particular prior art reference, avoid doing it. Don't discuss the features of the invention in the background. Put them in the summary and detailed description instead. Don't state the problem in too much detail in the background. The examiner could say that you laid out a case for why it would be obvious to come up with your invention based on the fact that the problem is obvious. Sometimes they'll say if the problem's obvious, the solution's obvious. And the obviousness is one of the things that can prevent you from getting a patent. So be mindful of that. Lastly, don't make the background too long. In general, I keep my backgrounds to between 100 to 400 words. So I hope that this video helped you gain an understanding of writing an effective background. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe so I can keep on making helpful content for you.